Welcome everyone. Today we'll be going through a few of the different methods that you guys have to protect your options positions within Thinkorswim. This is going to include your basic stops and trailing stops on both current and brand new positions. And we'll also try and touch on how you guys can create a stop based on the underlying stock price or even use a study crossover to activate the stop. Now, just keep in mind before we actually get started that you'll definitely want to be more careful using stops on options. Many options just aren't going to be liquid enough for you guys to place a stop and then have them work out the way that you intended. I'm not going to be spending much time talking about this in today's video, so please do a little bit more research on your own and just be aware of what to look out for before you place a stop. Like I mentioned a second ago, we do have several different stop methods that I want to cover in today's video, so let's go ahead and jump right into a few of the very simple examples to get those out of the way. In order for us to place a stop or trailing stop on one of our current open positions, you'll most likely be doing it right on your monitor page and specifically on the activity and positions tab. Here we're going to be able to see all of our current working orders right up at the top and then down below we can see all of our current and open positions right below that. Looking down below and using one of my open option positions as an example, let's come down here and open up my coin position. You can see here that I currently have five contracts. I originally put them on for $11.55 each, and currently they're trading for $22.20. So this is actually one of those trades that actually worked out quite nicely, but let's say we wanted to try and protect those gains. So in order for us to actually place that stop or trailing stop, we're simply going to come over here to the option contract itself and go ahead and right click on that. Or if you're on a Mac or a laptop, you'll use two fingers at the same time and that should count as a right click. We'll then look at the menu over here on the right hand side and we're simply gonna find the button marked create a closing order and it should be at the very top here. We'll then see another little menu appear on the right hand side with a template of what it is we're actually wanting to do. For this one, there's actually only one choice, but if it were a spread, you'd see a bunch of different options here and I'll show you what that looks like here in just a minute. But for right now, since this is our only option, we're going to come over here and click on sell five coin contracts. That'll then immediately take us to the trade page. And then down below at the very bottom of your screen, you're actually going to see that order ticket automatically built out for me. We can then edit this order ticket from left to right to actually specify what it is we actually wanted to do. Coming over here to the left, we can first specify how many contracts it is that we wanted to sell. And in my case, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as five contracts since I do want to close out the entire position with this stop. Moving over to the right, we can see the contract expiration, the strike price, so that's all good. It auto filled. And then over here at the right, we can see we're currently using a limit order and we're specifying a price of 2180. What we want to do is go ahead and click on the order type here where it currently says limit and there we can see all of the different order types available to us. So here we can see stop, stop limit, trailing stop, and trailing stop limit. For this one we're actually just going to go ahead and select a simple stop or stop market order. So let me go ahead and click on that guy. So now that I have the standard stop selected, this is going to allow me to set a specific price at which I would want to get out of this position. And then if the option contract ever does hit that price, a market order is going to be immediately submitted and get me out of this thing. So remember, in this example, the option is currently trading at about $22.20 a contract. And let's say we wanted to get out if it ever dropped down to $17 or lower. So what I'm going to do is come down here to the current price, 2180, and go ahead and adjust that over to 17. I could also come over here and flip it over from a day order to a GTC order or good until canceled. So now the stop is going to go out there every single day. And now if this option ever drops to $17 or lower, a market order will immediately go out there and close me out. And again, it's going to work indefinitely. And like I said at the beginning of this video, you'll definitely want to be careful since this is activating a market order and you'll likely end up filling at whatever the current bid price is at the time this stop activates. So if this is a really illiquid option contract and the bid ask spread is crazy wide, you could end up getting a pretty terrible price honestly and significantly lower than the actual activation price that we set. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm not touching on this too much today. Just be mindful to only use these stop market orders on really liquid underlyings. Now, if I instead wanted this to be a trailing stop order instead of just a regular stop market order, I could simply come up here to the order type and go ahead and flip it over to a trailing stop. I can then come over here and actually set my trailing amount. And as of right now, it's actually trailing it by 50 cents, it looks like. Let me go ahead and widen out this column so you guys can see a little bit better. 
And with this trail set at 50 cents, it's essentially saying I want this stop to always be 50 cents behind the current price of this option. And if it ever drops 50 cents, get me out. I could also adjust that by coming over here and adjusting the price. Let's say we wanted a trail by a dollar, so negative one, and hit enter. I could also come over here to the little plus or minus icon and click on it until it becomes a percentage sign. And now I could come over here and specify a specific percentage amount. So let me come over here to where it says negative 1% and I'm gonna change it to 10%. So now if I were to actually come over here and submit this order, I'm essentially saying if this option ever drops by 10%, get me out. But since it's a trailing stop, it is gonna follow the option price as it moves up. So if we were to place this order right now, 10% below the current price of this option would be about $19.98. And that's where my stop would sit. Now hopefully that option starts to move up and that's gonna mean my stop is gonna move up along with it, always falling behind by 10%. So let's say it does and let's say that option moves up from 22.20 up to 25. My stop would then trail up by 10%, moving up to roughly $22.50. Again, 10% below that new high. So let's say I'm actually happy with that and I do wanna submit it. I'm simply gonna come over here to the confirm and send button. I'm gonna make sure everything looks right in this order ticket, and then I'm gonna come down here and hit the send button. I could then come back up here to my monitor page, and again, specifically activity and positions. And now I can see it down here below as a working order. I did mention you guys could also do this on a spread, and you absolutely can. And I know I've mentioned it a bunch of times by now, but again, please be careful using stops on illiquid options, especially when adding it to a spread, since now you've got multiple different legs to consider. But in order to actually place the stop, we'll pretty much do the exact same thing as before. Coming down here and using the AMD position as the example, you can actually see here that I do have on an iron condor. In order to create the stop, we're simply gonna come up here and right click on the symbol for AMD. We're then gonna come over here and select create a closing order. And now looking over here on the right, you see a bunch of potential trades. Now I know this looks a little bit confusing, but up here at the very top, you'll generally see the overarching position to begin with, to close out the entire position. So in this case, you can see here it says buy back one iron condor on AMD. Looking down below that, you can actually see all of the other types of spreads or options inside of this iron condor. So technically the iron condor is really just a short vertical put spread and a short vertical call spread. So if you wanted to leg out a half of it, you could come down here and buy back one vertical call spread, or come down here and buy back one vertical put spread. Then besides that, you can see all of the other trades that are technically inside of this one, whether they be just legging out of single leg options or things like a strangle or a combo. But again, I know it looks a little bit confusing, but generally for the most part, you're always gonna be clicking on the very top line here where it says buy back one iron condor. In our case, that's exactly what we wanna do. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. Just like before, it's gonna take us to the trade page and then down below we can see the order ticket to close out of the entire iron condor. We could then specify the number of contracts, how many spreads we wanted to close out of. We could then come over here and change the order type and for this one, we're gonna change it from a limit order to a regular stop order. And then we'll come over here and specify the activation price. And since this one is an iron condor, the stop will actually be above the current price, not below it. So for this one, let's say we wanted to get stopped out if it ever went above $3.15. I'm gonna go ahead and type that guy in there. I'll again come over here and flip it over to a GTC order. And now that I'm happy with that, I'll simply hit confirm and send, and I'm gonna hit send once again. Heading back over to the monitor page, you can again see my iron condor right here, and it's basically saying if this iron condor ever trades for $3.15 or higher, get me out of it. Now, I do know I went through that incredibly fast, but please, I encourage you guys to practice this as much as possible within paper money before you do it in your real account. Make sure you're incredibly comfortable with all the ins and outs of the stop order types and just all of the risks involved with just using stops on options. Now, those two methods that we just talked about were actually basing the stop off of the actual option contract, whereas the next two methods we're gonna discuss is actually placing the stop based off either a stock price or off a study criteria. So let's say we actually wanted to open up a brand new position on Apple, and for this one, we're actually bullish on the stock. So let's come over here to the trade page, and we'll throw an Apple up here, AAPL. For this one, I'm going to be looking for a call option about 90 days out. So looking down here, it looks like the 21 October is about 90 days out. I'm then going to be coming down here to the available strike prices, and for this one, I want to look at buying an at-the-money call. 
Looking here, it looks like that would be the 155 call. And in order to place the actual order ticket to buy the call option, I'm simply going to click on the current asking price of 955. Just like normal, we're going to get an order ticket down below to actually buy this call option. And all we have to do is adjust the price and the number of contracts if we wanted to. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as one contract, but I am going to adjust the price down to, let's say, $9 even. And now that I've got that set, I actually want this order to trigger the next order to go out there. And in this case, I want this order, once it fills, to put out a stop right behind it. To do that, we will need to look down in the lower left-hand corner and go ahead and click on the Advanced Order button, which currently says Single Order. And for this one, we're going to go ahead and flip it over to First Trigger Sequence. That simply means the first order is going to trigger the second order, second triggers the third, and so on. So now in order to actually create that second order, which is going to be our stop order, we'll come back up here to the order ticket and simply right click on it. Then looking down below in the menu, we're actually going to click on the one that says create opposite order. We can now see our closing ticket, which we could actually just come over here and flip this over from a limit order to a stop and actually just set our activation price to let's say seven bucks, essentially saying if I buy it for nine, put out a stop to protect me at seven. But remember, for this one, we didn't actually want to base the stop off of the option price. We wanted to base it off the actual stock price of Apple. Now, in order to actually do that, we will need to come over here to the far right hand side of the order ticket where we can see a little gear and go ahead and click on that. We'll then get this conditions window where we can now specify that we only want our order to go out there to close this option if Apple stock price drops below a certain threshold. So to do that, we'll simply come over here to where it says submit at and we'll look down below. And right here it says symbol, we're clicking below that. We're gonna come over here to method, just click in it. We're then gonna come over here to trigger where it says less than or equal to. And for this one, I'm gonna specify that if Apple ever drops below 145, I wanna get out of this thing. So 145 and hit enter. So now what I've essentially said is do not submit the above order until Apple stock price goes less than or equal to 145 a share. This still isn't perfect because we don't actually want the above order to go out there once this condition is met. So what I want to do is actually come up here and flip this over from a stop to a limit order. I'm then going to come over here to where it says limit link to manual and I'm going to come down here and link it to the mark price. For this example, I'm actually going to leave the limit offset as 0.00, which just means whenever this condition is met, whenever Apple drops below 145, a limit order is going to go out there to close out this option contract at whatever the current mark price is. So let's say Apple goes down to 145 a share tomorrow and this option contract is trading for a dollar by a dollar and 10 cents. My order is essentially going to go out there at a limit price of a dollar and five cents, the current mark price. So this is how I would generally put in a stop order that's going to be based off of the stock price, but there are a few other ways that you guys could do it. This is just my preferred method. So now that I'm happy with that, we'll simply come down here and hit save. And we'll again come over here and flip this over from a day order to a GTC order. And now that I'm happy, I'm going to hit confirm and send and send the order. So now coming back over to the monitor page, we can again see that working order. And this time I'm saying, first off, I want to buy that contract. And then once this order actually fills, once I buy this 155 call for nine bucks, I want to put out this stop to go out right behind it. And remember, this stop is not going to go out there until Apple's stock price drops below 145 a share. Now, finally, the very last one we're going to discuss is actually creating a stop based off a particular study condition. For this example, let's go ahead and come down here to my Microsoft position. And if we open that guy up, it looks like I currently have one of the 275 calls. Coming over here to the charts page and actually let's pull up Microsoft and actually take a look at the chart here. Let's say for this one, I didn't actually want to get stopped out of this 275 call unless the 21 day simple moving average crossed below the 50 period moving average. Now I know it's a little bit hard to see, but it's basically when this blue line crosses back below the purple line. You could of course use whatever study is important to you or whatever study that you use. But in my case, I'm going to use the 21 crossing below the 50. And in order to do that, we will come back over here to the monitor page. We're simply going to come down below and right click on the option contract. I'm going to come over here and create a closing order and sell the Microsoft call option just like before. I'm then going to come over here to the far right hand side of the order ticket just like before and click on that. We're then going to get the conditions window pop up again and it's actually kind of similar to how we just did it for basing it off the stock price. So I'm going to come over here and click in the little box below the word symbol. I'm then going to come over here to method. 
And the big difference between what we did before and this one is we actually don't wanna use the stock price, which is the mark. We actually wanna come down here to study and then hit edit. That'll then bring up another pop-up window where we can then set all of the conditions that we wanted to create. Now there's no way you guys are gonna remember what I'm about to do and don't worry, this just takes practice and once you do it a few times, it becomes way easier. But running through it really quick, I'm gonna come over here and delete the current condition that's in here. I'm then gonna come down here and add my own condition. I'm gonna come up here and select a condition. It's gonna be the study condition. For this one, we were basing it off of the simple moving average. So we're gonna find that and click on it. I'm then gonna change the length from the nine period average to the 21. I'm gonna come up here and specify that I only want it to be submitted if it crosses below. And for this one, remember it was the same simple moving average, but we were gonna flip it over to the 50, I believe. And now that we're done, we're just gonna come down here and hit save. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay again. And now what I'm essentially saying is do not submit the above order until this condition is met, until Microsoft's 21 period simple moving average crosses below the 50 period moving average. Since I don't know what the price of that option contract is gonna be when that happens, when the 21 crosses below the 50, I'm gonna come back up here and instead of putting in a manual price, I'm gonna link it to the mark price just like before. So now that I'm happy with that, I'm simply gonna come down here and hit save. I'm gonna make it a good until cancel order, hit confirm and send, and send. So again, the order I just placed is basically saying, get me out of this 275 call on Microsoft whenever the 21 day moving average crosses below the 50. Now I know that was a lot and I did go through it very quickly, but those are the most popular methods that you guys are gonna be using to stop you out of your open options positions. You've got your standard stop and trailing stops based off the underlying option price. You've got the stop based off the underlying stock price. And we even went over how to base the stop off a particular study. So you can see it does get a little bit crazy with how many choices you have, but don't worry, you don't need to know them all and you don't need to know them all right now. This was really just to introduce you to all the different options that you guys do have at your disposal and it'll take time to learn them all. Now, if you guys do still have some questions for me or even some suggestions for other video topics you guys would like me to touch on, just let me know down below. Otherwise, have a great rest of your week, everyone, and I hope to see you on the next video.